thing I have to say. Oh, hold on a second. I'm going to find it first. Hold on. Something on the stove? <laughs> That's creepy. Steve, behold. Neil, just quit waiting in the lobby, okay? Abigail. Quickly, there there is some background noise. If everyone who's not speaking could just mute themselves, that'd be great. Thanks. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the October 6, 2021 full pedestrian advisory committee meeting. And I just want to notice that this meeting may involve the remote participation by members, either by telephone or other electronic means due to the local public health emergency of the novel coronavirus pandemic pursuant to the provisions of Minnesota statute section 13D021. Um, hi everybody and welcome. Uh, we'll start out with Millicent's roll call. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Aaron? Abigail? Here. Austin? Barb? Here. Christopher Hopper, Christopher Ross, Harmony, here, here, Julia, here, Matthew Steinrook, here, awesome. Neil, here, Paul, here, Peter, Raina, here. Here. Carrie. Jordan. No. Emma. Hello. Hi. Eric. Tom. Heidi. Julie. Mackenzie. Latana, Steve, here, Suzanne, here, uh, Chris Carthizer, here, Matthew Deardall, here, Melissa Flowers is here, so we have 14 in attendance. All right, everyone must be out enjoying this nice fall day. I assume. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, next up would be the adoption of the agenda and the acceptance of the minutes as attached to this agenda from the September 1st full meeting. I guess we'll do a roll call vote. Well, we need a motion in a second. Move to accept. Move. Seconded. All right. Thank, thank you. Neil moved. Julia seconded. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Abigail? Yes. Barb? Barbara? Yes. Harmony? Yes. Julia? Yes. Matthew Steinrich? Yes. Neil? Hi. Paul? Yes. Raina? Yes. Great. Eight voting members accepted the agenda in the minutes. All right. Thanks, everybody. With that out of the way, uh, this meeting again is uh, short. We just have the report outs from the subcommittee, so we have no other um, visitors or discussions this week. Um, so first up is the engineering subcommittee, and that I think goes to Barb. Yeah, um, Melanie, can you put it up on the screen so I can read it or I can just talk about it too. I don't need to read from the thing. There were, um, we were, we spent the day uh, talking about the Graco Park area, which is adjacent to uh, Plymouth Avenue North and Selby Avenue in Northeast. And <clears throat> they gave us three proposals um, and three concepts which they um which they presented each one separately 
Um, the, they have been doing an enormous amount of outreach. Uh, they've had open houses. Um, they've had online, um, online uh, ability to comment on the programs or the concepts. They've had pop-ups. Um, they brought a group of children uh, into the parks and, and had them experience the, the concept and talk to them about the various concepts. So it was, I think they've done a good job of trying to engage the community. And I think there will be more engagement as they move towards finalizing um, the final concept, which should happen according to what I recall and what was in my notes is November. Um, then they go before it'll be accepted in January and then they start um, finalizing the concept development. So they will be, they will pick a final concept, I think by the end of November. So let me go through the three concepts that they presented and give you some of the um, things that they had in common. Um, they all sort of involved improvements to the crossing at Selby and Plymouth, which is a really dangerous crossing. And they all talked about doing some traffic calming, um, lots of different strategies to improve the, 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 the intersection for pedestrians and bikes. Um, in two of the concepts, that is the, or in one of the concepts, that's the only crossing for bicyclists and pedestrians is at the Plymouth and Selby uh, intersection. Two of them have um, slated an underpass, and I'll go through that in a minute. Uh, group concept one, this concept provides a lot of green space. All of them do, I think, a nice job of that. It also provides two multi-use buildings. Um, it has a viewing platform that extends from within the park out into the river so that you can look over at Hill Island, which will be um, an, a refuge. Um, a natural refuge. There will be no paths on Hill Island, no pedestrians, no bikes or anything. It's just meant to be a wildlife refuge. Um, and that's true for all three concepts. But this particular one has an extended viewing platform that goes to the island with a platform on the island looking over the island. Um, it also offers um, some flood of um, a floodplain and some planning for high water to the hundred to the tune of a, what the hundred year uh, flood zone was. Um, let me see if there's anything else I can read it up here. Um, it has two. I think I said it has two entries for bikes and pedestrians. There is a small, a large and small dog park area, volleyball area, a promenade with seating and gathering space, and some um, sculpture sculptural water play. Um, so that's concept number two. And if you got the, um, the email, you can see, if you looked at that, you can see how it's divided. It's sort of a, a semicircle. Um, it was, uh, so I'll go on to concept two, which was the only one that did not have an underpass. Um, this one has just a single building to the north edge of the park. It, it also adds kayak rental and storage and an activity and access plaza where trucks could come in so we could have food vendors on the plaza. Um, it includes a dock that overlooks Hill Island. It includes forest canopy and a prairie edge and some open um, green bee lawn. It includes stormwater management, as does a concept number one, as well as intersection improvements to the Selby and Plymouth Avenue intersection. The final concept was concept three. Um, this concept was had lots and lots of greenery. It has, um, let me see, I've got it here. Um, it has one building with the MRP offices and public restrooms in it. It includes a plaza with an overlook to the river but um, not, I don't think it's a driving on, so uh, food vendors would have to come in on their own. It uh, offers a floodplain, forest, native prairie, public art, a very, a lot of trees, so big woods, and it is, it has both the East Bank Trail and the trail underpass, so it includes both of those and intersection improvements. Um, one of the things that I will say about this is that th I think Two of the concepts have parking. One and two both offer some parking. Concept three does not offer any parking. There is parking across the street um, in Boom Island. There's quite a bit of parking there, so people could park there and walk across the street or walk across, or if there's an underpass, 
go through the underpass to get to the park. That's pretty much what we talked about. Um, the PAC has some questions about um, flooding. They, uh, they had comments about also the uh, underpass. A couple of PAC members were opposed to it because they thought if there's greater flooding than just a hundred year flood, if it gets, if we get more and more water as we have seen uh, over the past few years and as climate change progresses, that it might end up flooding that and all that expense would be for naught and it would have to be permanently closed. Other people really thought it was the safest way for pedestrians and bicyclists to get to and from this park. Um, so that was, uh, I think there were more people talking about that in terms of the underpass being a safe way for pedestrians and bicyclists. Even if there are improvements to the intersection, it was felt that that needed to be there. We also talked about lighting um, and uh, Terry who presented said that they are going to have lighting, but they wanted to keep it low because of the wildlife refuge. So maybe pedestrian level lighting would be all there would be, not gigantic lights that would light up the whole area, which, um, but they do want lighting for safety and for people walking in the evening hours and when it's after dark. Uh, we also talked about whether or not there was a buyback for um, indigenous people. It had been originally owned apparently or land that uh, as almost of Minneapolis is indigenous land and was there a buyback involved and they said this was not a parcel of land that was um, considered people were talking about buyback for um, but they had involved indigenous members of the tribal community and had talked to them and they'd also brought mostly indigenous kids to the park area to look over it so they'd really tried to involve those people the members of tribes um, in consulting on how they develop these concepts. I think those were all the main questions that we talked about. Um, one thing was talked, one thing that I think Julia brought up was the current trend, uh, climate change emergency was considered when preparing these and Carrie indicated that they had not used that in looking at the 100 year flood, but that she appreciated that comment and she would certainly bring it back to the design team that she really liked hearing that. So that's pretty much what I, if anybody else who was there has anything to add, that'd be great. But that's my representation of that presentation. It was, it was, I thought they had lots of really good ideas. That's it. Thanks. Anyone Rose. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I don't know if anybody else has a comment on it because I missed the meeting, but I remember reading over it after. And the reason we don't have a resolution is, are they gonna be coming back? Do they want us to have a resolution on the concept or is it because we couldn't decide on one? Um, I think they do want a resolution. We talked at the uh, executive meeting that we should probably get one prepared. It was, we hadn't written one at the meeting because we thought they'd be coming back before the November, before they found the, before, or right after they created the final concept so we could have input. But Chris didn't think that, he thought it would be good for them to have input right now. So we were gonna try to compose one at this meeting is my recollection from the executive meeting. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, I think that's a good summary. And um, so anyone can go comment themselves as an individual right now and on their website. I think probably the most important thing for this group to comment in on is, is to weigh in if you have a, a feeling one way or the other about the underpass. Um, and then my understanding of kind of the other three options is that they were not gonna like select one specifically necessarily. They were kind of looking for what people liked about any given one and they were gonna kind of pool all those together to create the best thing. So if there's any other like main feature that this group really wants, maybe put that in, but um, I don't know, That that's also, like that's not coming directly from Carrie. That's a little bit more of my take on it. So I also just want to acknowledge that. Also, when you look at, if you look at the um, information that they gathered through the public engagement, the, the strongest thing that they say that they got from members of the community was that they wanted the natural habitat on the Hill Island, that they didn't want pedestrians and bikes to have access to it, that it, they really, that was that was the number one thing in terms of percentage of responses. And and the underpass and the tunnel and um, were, were way down in what the public wanted, according to the, the public comment. So I'm just, I, if you look at it, you can see that, but I, I thought that was kind of interesting because I would have thought the underpass would have had a stronger response. 
I think as far as our group goes, it would be pretty easy to pull together something that would yeah. encapsulate all of our views, because I think ultimately we would agree that the more points of pedestrian access we have, the better, sort of the more porous every crossing yeah. is, the better for pedestrians, but never as an excuse to maintain high speeds of vehicular traffic at a location like um, the at-grade crossing. So we support it because we want more um, crossings of barriers as pedestrians um, and with concerns about how it would hold up within flooding. But we also, you know, demand or whatever the, um, that the at-grade crossing is, is very, very safe and easy to cross for people of all ages and abilities. Okay. And Matthew, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to make a, I just, I really agree with what Julia uh, said, especially how you finished there about the at grade crossing. Um, that's something that I think is really, really important um, for ped bike access and just welcoming people to the park that are not driving there. I think that's just so important. So that corner um, at Sibley um, and an eighth or Plymouth is really important. And then also, I, I just think it's really important to to note that this is a major regional trail for city for the city of Minneapolis as well. And so having that through movement be very comfortable seems very critical to me. And so I mean all along the river and then um, connecting up east west uh, for the uh, Great Northern Greenway along 18th Avenue and and farther. So um, those are two aspects that I've been looking at as well. So in terms of writing this resolution, should we have uh, I would Millicent want to just like pull up a word doc and then we're, we're taking comments now, but then we'll actually need to draft it. I'm just going to ask for logistic reasons because we haven't really done this before. I, oh, Matthew, do you want to? Well, I don't hear what you, what you were going to say and then I'll go. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to say like if, if it's a simple, straightforward resolution with like one to three points, like I think we could just write it now. I'm, I'm happy to pull up a document and we can just do that. I, I think we've maybe not online, but like in the history of the pack, that's a very normal thing to have, sure. have done. Um, so if it feels like it's going to be easy enough to do that, we can go ahead and do that. Let let's make it easy and let's let's do that together. Because I think I think it could start out like the pack has the following comments about this project at this point, right? And like the underpass, important or not? Like the the crossing at Sibley, important. The regional connection, you know, like we could it could be that simple. So. Can you make it bigger, Chris? We can read. Yeah, one second. Yeah. And you can uh, also do it on your own. Um, I know, but I can't. I can't do it there you go. Oh, cool. Uh, what, what's it actually called? Is it like? Graco Park. The Graco Park, Park Graco master, Park. master plan or something like that? Um, it just said Graco Park on it. That was what we got in the thing. Say Graco Park project. Yeah. Concept development. How about that? Oh, very cool. Concept. So underpass, what do you think? What what do we want where do we want to land on that? I think, can we go in order of importance? Lead us, Julia, go for it. What's the most important? So could we start, the most important is that at grade crossing has to be safe. Okay. And that means reduced vehicle lanes and, and slow speeds, I think. Plymouth, Plymouth Ave? And then, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what Matthew said about the regional park that this is particularly important as like it's a major connector. So I'll, I'll take the second bullet, Chris, then um, and expand on what Julia just said. I'll say the um, this this park is a major uh, regional um, connection for people walking and biking. And so that that needs to be emphasized. Yeah, that's good. Is it on the pedestrian priority network? I don't recall. I don't think we put the trails on, but I, I could double check. But 
tra trails are on as like a separate yeah like like we show trails with the ppn so but they're kind of kind of a separate ish thing i i don't know if that makes it count as the ppn or not actually yeah but i mean they're 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 inherently about prioritizing walking and biking so okay a any other bullets underpass then the, yeah underpass. what do you want to say about it it's an outrage we want <laughs> <laughs> we want it if it makes important. sense in right. changing. Go ahead, Julia. Just that we want it if it makes sense in changing conditions. Uh, because more porosity for pedestrians increases walkability. So, so you support the underpass. But it's contingent upon item one. Chris, that. I don't think you need to put in the pedestrian advisory committee there, but just say we. Yeah, we'll just put because we're making comments on it. So yeah, like supports. It felt weird to say we. That's why I typed it out. I would just we, say supports. I think the SR. Oh. Because you're already said it's already comments, so like supports the underpass. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. And then is the qualifier? Um, because I, I don't think if it makes sense is is enough direction. Like, what's the qualifier? Qualifier is if it is feasible within the most recent IPCC predictions. Uh, I don't Julia, just IPCC. go ahead. Well, go ahead. just just one thing quickly on like the the flooding for for the underpass is like, are are you thinking that like long term that whole area would would be like long term underwater or are you just worried about more flooding because I think there's ways to design it to be like a floodable trail that's usable when it's not flooded. But my but understanding, uh, so I would be concerned about it more. Of, um, the long intensity duration. I don't know. I mean, I also don't know how the Army Corps of Engineers manages the river and if if that would be something where they'd be changing river levels at that point, because it seems like that would be dependent on them. Why don't we use the underpass until it's no longer usable? Well, could we say something more general, like we support the underpass so long as that it is built climate resilient or that the climate resiliency right. measures are put into place? I love that. That's yeah, good. Perfect. I like that too. Perfect. I like that too, yeah. So what is it? So long as... And then I would also add to, uh, I want to make sure this doesn't get dropped on the first bullet point that at Great Crossing at Plymouth Avenue is safe by reducing vehicle speed or vehicle access or something. Because somebody said by reducing vehicle something, and maybe that should be included there at that sentence. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First one. By vehicle, like speeds and volumes. Volumes. And then I would I would say and along lanes? with crossing improvements. Yeah. I have a question. Do you? As, as far as I remember, do you know if they are getting to redo Plymouth Avenue that they're not changing that bridge at all currently, are they with with the number of lanes or anything? So they'll still be the same number of lanes going through that intersection? They said they hadn't checked into it yet. Oh, that was something that they when we brought it up, I think they said they would go. Um, they bring that back because that hadn't come up yet. And, and I'll, I'll just say in terms of like the way coordination typically works with that is, you know, the like the park is a is a specific parcel that the park board owns. And then there's a lot of coordination between the park board and Minneapolis Public Works. So I'll, I'll just say that's something that we are looking at, you know, interjurisdictionally. OK, but but the city controls the street. So yeah. yeah. Well, spelling error, by the way. Third bullet point, yeah. so long as. What was that? Uh, so long as. So lang. Thanks, Neil. You're welcome. What, what's this? Do we have any comments about parking? Only two of them had 
very limited parking, I, which I think is fine, but I wondered if there were any comments, if we had a support or no support for that. Why about, why about Harrison neighborhood with the parking there? Well, they have park on two of the oh. concepts, there's parking at the park. Oh, they do? Very oh. minimal parking. I think one has probably 15 slots and the second one has slanted parking with about eight or nine for maybe for handicap parking or um, special deliveries. I'm not sure. That's on Harriet Island or whatever it's called. Yeah. Don't think they had specified what kind of parking it was. I think it was just they, general. Yeah. They just, said angle parking was in concept two and then there was a small parking lot. Oh. On concept one. No, I, ju I just mean whether or not it's like disability or like loading. I think it was just general parking. Harry talked about maybe having some for handicap, but, gotcha. but I, you know, I'm just bringing that up. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where I stand on that, but I think it's good to think if we have. Any I went, what about doing um, saying we we um, don't believe any parking beyond um, accessible parking is appropriate? We believe the park parking already in place is 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 adequate. Yes, yeah. and that any additional parking should be very clearly and only for um, handicap spots. So. Parking. I like it. Can I be used for handicap access? So bullet two seems a little incomplete to me. I think Matthew, you said something like it's a regional connection for people barking, biking. I'm sorry, walking and biking, and it should be we should prioritize the movement of people through the park for walking and biking. I don't know. I think you said it better, Matthew. No, I love that. I love that last part. So we should. So so movement uh, so through movement but movement through the park yeah just like you said it. <laughs> movement through the park should be uh, sort of well, you said comfortable you said movement through the park should be comfortable on bike or foot knowing yeah. that this is a through fare technically for that regional trail yes oh well i love that i for some reason i couldn't think of what i what i said earlier that's uh, that looks good just um park should be what where'd that go yeah. um, uh, cool uh, this is a good list i like it it is I want to cool. jump in here. I just have a quick question about the parking. I wasn't able to make it to the uh, subcommittee meeting, but it looks from the site plans, there's going to be some buildings on the site. So what uh, what are the needs for those buildings for, for parking? The, as far as I remember, I don't know if you want to go, Barbara, if I should. Go ahead. The, I, I don't know if they were like set in stone it, and it kind of depended. There were different options in some some of them. One building was like a kayak rental was an idea. Um, another building could be like, I think there was the potential for like a, a coffee shop or like some sort of activated space like that. I, I don't remember what the but other options were. There was a, a on, I think on every concept there was a building that was for the Minneapolis Park Board and then uh, I think two of them had off a public restrooms. There were there was one plan, and I think it was plan concept one that had two buildings. One of which was for vendors to be maybe developed later for um, maybe soft drinks or whatever. I mean, some sort of vendor thing. And the other one was the uh, offices for Minneapolis Park Board. So there will be buildings on. I think there were buildings set on any of the concepts that were for the Minneapolis Park Board and some included public restrooms. Um, but
But there is parking. My understanding is there is some parking on adjacent streets. And Neil implied, you know, that there was adequate parking. So I don't know if the park board had intended that for staff or if they thought of that for visitors and uh, deliveries, uh, that sort of thing, and handicapped accessibility. That's all I remember. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm just thinking that we may be a little bit more flexible on the parking depending on the, uh, you know, the buildings that are constructed as part of the site. Maybe, maybe instead we can ask them to explore um, working with Metro Transit. Since they're also looking across the river with the Upper Harbor Terminal, you know, that that would be a new line. So I don't know if that's, you know, getting more um, river, riverway transit going. And there used to be the line on, was it Washington in Northeast, where um, I think Steve was telling us that that is a ghost line that um, exists on a map. So there might be potential to add that one in more easily again than, um, than to create a whole new line. As I said before, there is parking on some island. If we have an underpass, to, it would go across through the trail, I think, on Boom Island, and there would be um, easy access by bike or walking into the park from parking at Boom Island. That, that's you know, just my recollection. A, a way to um, to maybe get what Paul was saying is, uh, instead of saying should only, maybe you can say should prioritize handicap access, and that's only if, if we were looking for a... Yeah. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that without being clear that the plan needs to really be in alignment with um, the IPCC report and whatever the um, the working group report from that same um, group comes up with. It, I think already it's not close enough to being in alignment with what we need to be doing and I just worry about um, yeah, giving permission without being explicit that it really needs to be in alignment with science. Yeah, well, I, I guess I just hate to see that, you know, if there's going to be buildings like a coffee shop or whatever and a, a vendor doesn't want to come in because there's no parking near his site. So it's going to be used by the community, I guess. You know, we should just make sure that, uh, you know, I agree that parking should be minimum, but, uh, you know, we shouldn't uh, disallow any additional parking as part of our resolution. I mean, we know we have plenty of studies showing how um, increasing walk bike access improves stuff for businesses. So it seems like a fear of lack of parking is not substantiated by by studies on how businesses generally function within cities. So uh, yeah, but this, this location, is, to, this location yeah. is pretty remote compared to uh, you know business on uh, Lake Street, for example. It's uh, it's pretty remote compared to a commercial strip. It's, it's at a fairly um, definite destination and it's within easy walking distance of other kind of regional destinations. Um, I end up there a surprising amount of time. It's one of the places in Northeast I probably am the most. Um, and it seems like during the I &E, a lot of us had have spent time there despite not necessarily living close. So I think it maybe it'll be seasonal, but I do think we need to give recommendations based on what's good for um, for walkability, and hopefully, business will sort itself out. How how would uh, how would the pack like to resolve this? Should we keep it as is um, for a vote? Should we separate it? What do you think? Well, I think I think we have two options. One, we could actually go around and say how we feel about parking, so that we can get a consensus. Well, we can get a, a majority vote on the parking, or we remove the bullet on parking. I think those are our two options. Um, Barb, I'll leave it to you. Which one do you think we should go through? Um, what do you think? Well, I think I would like to hear how the how the pack members feel about it. In my opinion, that's a good way to come to some solution. We have the time. I think that's a good idea. Great. Do you want to start? Sure. Um, I I think 
there's plenty of parking in that area for people driving. Even there's handicapped parking. Um, there is on street parking. My understanding is adjacent to this, um, not directly on Selby, but on side streets that are adjacent to the park. So I like the idea of really emphasizing um, a reduction in the use and need for vehicles in this area. So I'm, I'm with Julia in this. I, I think it should be, there's lots of places you could park if you need to. Um, and I, you know, I, I think having it uh, say for handicapped access is, is positive. Um, that's my opinion. And I drive all the time, but I don't think we need more vehicles anywhere, so. Thanks. Um, who would, else would like to share their thoughts on parking? Raina? Yeah, I agree with Barb. Um, you know, I also missed the subcommittee meeting, so I don't know exactly how many parking spots were, um, I guess, contemplated, but I do think that we need to take a pretty strong stance um, that that if we're going to put in additional parking, it be um, limited to those who need the handicap access. Thanks, Austin. Um, I do support the limitation of parking, and I, I agree though that maybe less people will visit if there is no parking. I think that sends a message though that we're trying to change the culture in the city from a car centric culture to a pedestrian and bicycle friendly culture. With the exception for accessibility for folks with disabilities, I think we should try to limit parking in this development. That's what I'll say. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Neil? Huh. Um, well, I'd be inclined to take that out, but um, even though I agree that I want to limit driving, um, but I will defer to whatever the rest of the rest of us come up with. Sure, makes sense. Um, Harmony, do you have anything to add? Yep, let me get unmuted. Uh, I agree with the limiting parking as well there's i run a lot of races over there there's tons of parking on street all over that area so you can walk a few blocks to the park that's how i look at it thanks yeah that's helpful to know um and matt steinrich um yeah i i don't have a good enough sense of the transit or the parking options in the area really to have a strong opinion one way or the other i definitely in favor of limiting cars, but I want to make sure we're not limiting accessibility. So I don't really on this specific issue have an opinion. That makes sense. Um, thank you for sharing. Does anyone else have a comment on the parking? I actually do. I, um, I think if we keep it in and if we talk about the accessibility, I want to really highlight that that we also need to look at transit because um, people should not People who use wheelchairs or other mobility devices should not have to own, you know, it's thousands of dollars objects to get around to our park. So to, um, I, I am a little bit iffy about adding parking to any new development. I think I maybe gave my more middle of the road position um, initially, uh, given that they're suggesting parking. I think that's a little, a little iffy because of how hard it's been historically to remove parking. Um, adding it at all feels a little nervous for me. Um, but having it be accessible by parking and also calling out needing to make sure accessibility is not just for those wealthy enough or with the kinds of disabilities that still allow um, car ownership and driving would be important to me. Thanks, Julia. Anybody else have any last comments? Cool. So, Barb, what do you think for this as a resolution, or is there anything we're missing? I, I don't think so. Um, unless we, the only other thing I can think of is if we have a strong statement about that, the passenger uh, bridge or the pedestrian bridge that goes from the Graco Park to Hill Hill Park, uh, Hill Island. Um, 
I'm opposed to that. I don't think we should get pedestrians or bicyclists anywhere near that island. I think it should be a reserve and we should keep people and bikes away from that. I think we can see it from the river, from the trails, but I think to put people close to that will um, damage the uh, wild, wildlife refuge. So that's just my opinion. But I don't know if anybody else has strong feelings about that. I just did not like the idea of a pedestrian bridge going across. And that's what the public overwhelmingly wanted, right? No, oh, they just wanted it to, yeah, they just wanted and it not to going be, over there. not going over. They just wanted it to be reserved for wildlife. Yeah. And I, I agree. I think it should be a refuge and we shouldn't, we don't need to be walking in a refuge. Great. Um, Matt, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I just wanted to say I agree with Barb. We just don't. We have so few completely wild spaces in the city, and I just completely agree. Great. Maybe, Chris, you can add a bullet. Yes. You want to, anyone to have specific language or uh, <laughs> do, do not build a pier to the island? We are not in favor of building a pedestrian walkway to Hill Island. I yeah, think we are, yeah, we are not a good way of that. Or we are opposed to building a pedestrian walkway to Hill Island. Thanks. Um, and Steve has uh, his hand up uh, about the transit service. Go ahead. Hall Island? Is that what it is? Hall, I, is it Hall or Hill? I'm not sure. Let me look. I, don't know. Hall. I, I can. Hall. H A L L. Thank well, you. Yeah. Um, Mahomal here. Um, regarding the transit service, um, there's high frequency service on 2nd Street Northeast via Route 11. That's um, if you're measuring the Sibley, um, that's uh, 0.3 miles. Uh, there's service on Broadway, uh, again, about 0.3 miles. That's on Route 30. That's 30 minute service. And then across the river on uh, Washington and Plymouth, you have Route 14, which is 20 minute service. So that's that's the service you have in the area. Thank you, that's helpful. Yeah, so it seems that our, there are some high frequency routes that come really close to this park, so that's nice. 11 is about what, two blocks away? I'm, I'm sorry, what's that, Neil? Yeah, Neil it's point, point 0.3 miles, Neil. Yeah, oh, three. Well, well, Plymouth, it's, if you're measuring to uh, 8th Avenue and Sibley, is it? Um, just on the east side of the bridge, it's 0.6 miles to Plymouth and Washington on the, you know, on North Minneapolis, and that's Route 14. But the um, high frequency route is Route 11 on 2nd Street Northeast, and that's, I think, 0.3 miles. Okay, 4th Avenue bus, from my point Thanks. of view. Yeah, yeah correct. <laughs> so Thanks, Steve. You. Anyway. Um, Raina, you have your hand up? Sorry, yeah, on that last bullet point, it feels um, maybe a bit a bit short. I was wondering if we would consider adding just to the end of it in the interest of preserving this area as a pure wildlife refuge. Good idea. Lovely. Thanks, Chris, for typing all this. Mm -hmm. um, any last comments on this resolution? Yeah, um, Besides Neil, obviously. I'm trying to read under this damn fool bar here. <laughs> okay. Anybody? This is a anybody pure, else? This is a pure this area. All Just right. To say, thank you to oh. Paul for. For bringing for bringing it up so we can have that discussion. I really appreciate yeah. um, that. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to learn about the high frequency buses that are near there too. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. All right, uh, Barb. Anything else to add to this, or yeah. you think we're ready to to? Um, I think it looks good. Yeah. I think so too. Um. So I think. It's been moved because we wrote it together and I'll second it. So now are we allowed to vote on it? 
think some we probably need to assign someone as moving it, right? I'll do that. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> we moved it. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> so I guess we're voting on it now. Now we vote. Is it time to vote now? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll okay. I'll read the names. Abigail. Yes. <laughs> Austin? Yes. Barb? Yes. Harmony? Yes. Julia? Yes. Yeah. Matthew S? Yes. Neil? Yes. Paul St. Martin? Yes. Raina? Yes. Okay, that's nine voting members vote yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. Great work. Um, I think that was good. Good job working together on that. It took us a while, but it was fun. So um, if that's everything for engineering, it'll be time to move on to programs and policies. Yeah, who's here from that committee? That's me. I guess so. Um, I would. So I was. I think what Peter and I've been doing the last few meetings is just asking people to, if there's questions that um, are coming up from, uh, from the minutes um, or after that. Um, but just to go over, we went through the complete streets update. Um, Katie White and Ethan Foley um, presented on that, and uh, after. Um, Jim left the committee. Uh, Abigail took over as a, our appointed member there. Um, we also learned about the pedestrian safety research project um, with Nicole Morris and Ethan again. And um, we talked with Ellison Bell um, with the Green Infrastructure Program, which is partially in sort of the sidewalk transportation department and partially in stormwater management. Uh, so the minutes are thorough and excellent, and I would highly recommend reading those if you haven't had a chance. Um, does anyone have any questions from those or is it okay to jump into the resolution? And feel free to have questions. It looks like we've still got a full hour and nine minutes for a lot of conversation. I have a question for like historical purposes since I'm a newer member to the committee. Um, I brought up mm -hmm. the concept of like automated traffic enforcement remedies, like like speeding cameras and whatnot. Has that ever been discussed before with this group? I'm just curious to know if that's been discussed. Yeah. A little bit. It's it's something that requires state level changes. Um, it was in place in the 90s in Minneapolis, but the state Supreme Court ruled it wasn't constitutional. So things need to happen at that level. Um, I know there's been some division around um, how effective or ideal it would be versus um, putting that effort and advocacy work into um, designing better streets that do not promote speeding like most of our community corridors currently do. So that's that's my understanding of the history of it. I don't think we've really discussed it specifically except tangentially with enforcement conversations overall. But um, would anybody like to add to that? Neil, you've, you've got the longest tenure. I don't know if you have any. Uh, yeah, that's all up. we've ever heard. And, uh, I'm guessing Paul can um, substantiate that since you've had to at least not continue with any project of that sort. But as far as we know, it's illegal because the Supreme Court banned it. Yes, that's correct, Neil. The few years ago, many, I don't remember how many years ago, at Minneapolis implemented red light cameras. And then uh, you know some people protested their tickets and sued the city, and then that was found. The state supreme court found it was unconstitutional. So uh, the city um, would need to go to the state to get the state laws changed in order to implement automated enforcement of red light running or speed cameras. So I think if we decided to take that up, it would probably be a PNP conversation and we would be asking the city to put that on their legislative agenda in the same way that they did with um, the speed limits and working with St. Paul on that. But that's about all I know for 
Yeah, and I think there's plenty of plenty of mention in the Vision Zero plan that the city proposes to implement automated uh, enforcement mm. as part of Vision Zero. Well, that's right. Yeah. Steve, you're hitting that. Uh, yes, I I thought I had definitely heard in a meeting with public works staff, but this was probably 2019 that they they meant to put this on their legislative docket and maybe it um, got shifted off because of you know where we are you know all the other things that have come up during the meantime but but i do think they had intended to try and move this forward again which you know would i believe be a good thing thank you thanks yeah, I think Julia's right. Maybe Julia, it can be something we discuss putting on a PMP agenda in the near future. Yeah. Um, would we want to have it with enforcement generally, or um, I can't remember if it's come up when we've looked at our priorities, but I think that's sort of where, for me, that's where it comes down to is um, what kind of efforts are required and is it the best place to put those efforts? But definitely could have that conversation regardless since we haven't had it in a while. Sure, sounds good. So why don't we just keep it in mind when we talk about next month's agenda or this month's agenda uh, for PMP and then see if it'll fit in either this or um, the next month and see how to, to kind of formulate it. Cool. Awesome. Um, thanks for the question, Austin. This is important. Um, hopefully that gives you a little more of an overview. Yes, thank you. Are there other questions <laughs> or comments, things that stood out in the meeting that you'd want to share with people who weren't there that didn't get captured in the minutes or that did, but you want to emphasize? <laughs> I don't see any hands, by the way, Julia. Okay. Um, then I will go on to the resolution. Um, and it's going to be, it's a little bit of a long one. Okay. Did this come through uh, in the um, usual download? Yes. Or? Oh, thank yep. you. It's, it is, it is now on the, limbs. Mm -hmm. on. It was forgotten on limbs, but it was put up there, yeah. I think, yesterday or today. So it was in the email that Chris sent. The agenda that's attached there it, um, has the link, assuming that what I'm about to read is the correct thing. Yes. So, complete streets resolution. The pedestrian advisory committee appreciates the time that public works staff took to update the complete streets policy. We have a few edits highlighted below. Overall, the PAC thinks that the complete streets policy is fine. The problem lies in when we see designs that do not meet our interpretation or the policy's definition of a complete street. Yet that design is sent forth without clearly advancing the modal hierarchy laid out in this policy. That being said, we hope that the updated policy will support designers increased adherence to the modal hierarchy. On page two, in the fourth bullet point, change advance to achieve. It is important that no framing allows us to seek half measures as acceptable. In the policy framework section on page three, the third paragraph after the bullet point, we suggest adding winter and winter maintenance concerns as part of prioritizing pedestrians, in addition to snow storage, which is something else. In the paragraph on page five, starting with individual routine maintenance activities, winter maintenance must be included winter maintenance for sidewalks and bike lanes, especially given the increase in the number of yearly freeze thaw cycles, must be addressed as a priority. On page six, planning, paragraph two. Reiterate that automobile travel, travel, uh, travel delay will be deprioritized in transportation decision-making and add language around the importance of improving year-round travel times for people walking, biking, and especially using transit. Also on page six in design, first paragraph, last sentence. Level of service is not a measure of success on our streets, but may be evaluated as required by project partners or funding sources. Minneapolis Public Works should state that they will not pursue projects that require car-centric designs in order to secure funding if they hope to achieve, achieve a truly safe and equitable transportation system for walking, rolling, biking, and transit. And finally, on page seven, last paragraph, Public Works' goal is to obtain more data to identify and understand issues. Sentence about winter maintenance is unclear. We do not need more winter maintenance data on how dangerous and impassable sidewalks can be in winter. This should be made clear in the policy data collection. 
and planning can be done in internal public works documents, but the policy should make it clear that the city intends to act. Second. Thank you. Do people have any um, comments or questions on, on that resolution edit? And if in case you missed the PMP meeting for anybody who might not have been there, this is some of these edits are based on the edits um, that, as Julia mentioned, like I and, and other uh, complete streets kind of group, you know, with the bicycle advisory committee and like um, move Minneapolis and our streets kind of we had edits on the policy. Um, some of those got incorporated into the draft that then we saw as the pedestrian advisory committee. Um, and then some of these bullets are kind of uh, new based on kind of the discussions we had around the policy and just um, thoughts that we have generally as the pedestrian advisory committee when I kind of reread the policy. So if anybody has edits or questions for sure. Um, speak on I've that. got a question, Abigail. Yeah. Does, do you think complete streets would be applying to like, we know that people use the car lanes as especially wheelchair movement lanes. Um, in the winter because of the lack of sidewalk maintenance. Is that something that's addressed in there or is that something completely separate? Um, like implicitly addressed? Imp implicitly or explicitly? Because I think Matthew, you've answered implicitly. this question before. Okay. Matthew, you've answered like this question before. Mm -hmm. um, can I understand the question again, Julia? Is is it implicit? Do we implicitly discuss or using the streets as walk and bikeways? I guess okay. Would would the complete streets policy apply to existing streets if we're looking at addressing existing conditions and existing usage? Yes. Okay. But and but I mean your your allow. question your question mm -hmm. there I think was actually. Does the complete streets apply to streets in the existing conditions? So yes. Yeah. Right. Is there is it different than that? I I want to make sure that it's flexible enough that we we can change our thinking rather than pouring new concrete. Well, that's really I, what we need to be sure, doing. Sure. I, I would say the complete streets policy is flexible yes i mean the com the complete okay. series policy is meant to prioritize and guide our work and so but but yeah, that can I, go <laughs> both ways probably right so yeah i would say julia that it isn't like design tactic it's not saying like add bike lanes it's saying bikes should be prioritized so i do think that right. it does allow okay. for flexibility um in the way that it could just be like you just close a street to cars and then you have a car like a street for people um yeah it doesn't yeah. it doesn't like give design like requirements yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I have not had as much of a chance to dive into this as I've been hoping. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, the work that you have done, Abigail, and that clarification, Matthew. I, I think maybe just just uh, to further this conversation a little bit, the it it, it could be argued that it, it uh, the, the BAC is maybe thinking like it might be too flexible. So there's some conversation because like depending on your perspective what flexible what does flexibility turn into you know does it um so I, i'll do I, i'm gonna i'm gonna back up yes it's flexible um and whether that's a good thing or not is is probably a good question <laughs> okay i mean so it is it, it it should be flexible in terms of what it applies to and the conditions it applies to, but it should not be flexible in terms of the hierarchy of who gets prioritized. That's a great or way to say it. Yes, I think it's I think it's very so, clear. The hierarchy is very clear, and like what we're what we are intending to prioritize in the right of way is very clear. But like how to do okay. that specifically is not, and, and I think that's by design. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I mean that that perfect. Thank you. Okay. Do other people have? questions, um, big questions like mine or more specific ones, comments? Well, so along those lines, this is Austin, along those lines, um, like there was a concern that projects get exceptions, frequently get exceptions to these to this policy and that people then don't prioritize the way the hierarchy should be. And so my question throughout this whole process is like, well, where are the 
how do we ensure that the, the projects coming forward after this policy goes into place, that there is compliance with that, that people don't get exceptions or variances based on certain circumstances? And maybe that's just my limited knowledge of how this process works since I'm so new, but I think that's along the lines of what Matt and Julia were talking about, is making sure that, yeah, the policy is flexible, that it can meet different project needs, but not too flexible so that we start deviating from the policy itself or the, the spirit of the policy. Uh, Austin, I just want to clarify one point because it, um, it, it's important. So the the original complete series policy had an exemptions process um, that had some bullets that would describe when an exemption would take place. And that has never officially, that has never happened um, since the complete series policy has been adopted. And so what that means is Public Works has never like brought a layout to City Council and asked for an exemption from the policy. And as as a maybe a result or part of that, um, Public Works staff is recommending not having an exemption process in the update. Right, and that kind of lends itself to the, my first paragraph um, before the bullets, just saying how like we've had this policy forever. No one's ever asked for an exemption, but we keep seeing things that are like totally car centric, and like sometimes there's not a sidewalk on one side of the street, so, and like at, at a bare minimum. So th that's kind of a I think what I tried to lay out in the first paragraph, and maybe it could be clearer. Maybe this was kind of just really a draft um, I tried my best on. So, mm -hmm. and, and to that, um, I was wondering if you want to scroll up a little bit, Millicent, to that first paragraph. Um, I can't totally see everything clearly, but uh, the instead of saying our interpretation and then I use parents to say like and the policy's definition, do we want to scrap our interpretation to say does not meet the policy's definition of a complete street? Like kind of just make that a sentence. What do people think about changing it? Does it strengthen it or weaken it? I, I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> uh, maybe we could be a little clear since we're the pack. We could we could just say when we see designs that do not prioritize pedestrians, let alone meet the definition of a complete street. Okay. Or something akin to that. Yeah, Millicent, did you catch that? You see this, Abigail? Unfortunately, from my browser, I get an update. Like I don't see, I don't see action on the screen. I just get like suddenly the screen changes, and then Can it's frozen again. See? Yeah, I see. Just, someone else will have to be the editor. Uh, I'm visual. To mine. Give me a minute, though. Here's this damn sentence. <laughs> uh, thank you, Nelson. That's clear. We see designs. So, so far I've changed it to overall, the PAC thinks that the complete streets policy is fine. The problem lies in when, is in when we see designs that do not prioritize pedestrians, let alone meet our definition of, meet our definition in parentheses or the policy's definition of a complete street. Well, I'm having a hard time doing this. Um, I would say just, let alone meet the policy's definition, and you can remove the parentheses All right, so. and, and our definition. So let alone meet, delete, 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 the policy's definition. Um, hey, Neil, we can send you the updated oh, version for yeah, the minutes please, if yeah. you'd like that. Okay. I'll just do either one, so please just send me the real, the final version. Cool. You can, uh, you can see that now, Abigail? Um, yeah. Goes, yeah, I can see, I can see it, but I haven't seen what you edited to. It's I don't okay. know what's going on with my. So, so let me do it because the the sentence that 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 we that Abigail you just articulated then has a comma after it that says more stuff. So yet that design is sent forth without clearly advancing the modal hierarchy laid out in this policy. So mm -hmm. can we just period after? In for and so in quotations complete street period space capital Y yet maybe in the past or up to this point 
that where, design where sent forth. Where do you want, where do you want to put Julia, that? Julia, let's just let this edit go through first. Okay. Sorry, can someone just inform me that the edit has been finished? It has been. It's been done. Okay. Um, so yes, go ahead, Julia. Just instead of um, yet, maybe up to this point or historically, that design is sent forth without clearly advancing the modal hierarchy. Okay, so change yet to historically, <laughs> comma, or prior to this, prior to the update. Just something to make it clear that we're we're expecting this to change in this. I just want something to. Okay. Historically is good. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. And, and Thank you. Also, it says historically that design, but the previous sentence implies more than one. So, do we want to say historically the designs? A design. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. A design. Or yeah. designs are. Yeah. A design is fine. Which one do you want to say? Historic a design. A design. Okay. Historically, a design is sent forth without clearly advancing the modal hierarchy laid out in this policy. Sweet. Any other mm -hmm. edits to this paragraph? Any edits to any of the subsequent bullet points or thoughts? Any last comments on this resolution? All right. How do you feel, Julia? Let's vote on it. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I guess I guess we can, we can take it to a vote. I forget we've moved and passed, uh, we've moved and seconded it, and then we edited it. So. We'll now take a roll call vote on the on the complete streets resolution as edited. Okay, <clears throat> Abigail. Yes. Austin. Yes. Barb. Yes. Oh, Harmony. I said yes. Yep, I got you, Barb. Now okay. Harmony. Yes. Okay, Julia. Yes. Matthew S. Yes. Awesome. Neil. Yes. Paul. Yes. Dana. Yes. We have nine yes votes. Thanks, everybody. Motion carries. Um, Julia, any other updates from P and P? I think that's it from us for right now. Um, except for I. I don't remember if there's anything else on the agenda and I, I miss not seeing everybody in person. So I want it to keep going till six and it might not be able to. That's my only thing I'd add. Well, that's heartbreaking, but. <laughs> but also just a me problem. Yeah, well, I... I'll turn it back over to Abigail. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, that is everything on the agenda. So it's now time for any announcements if anyone has anything they'd like to share. Uh, open streets on Sunday, Lindale Ave South, 11 to 5, should be good. Matthew, what does it run from? Do you mean the uh, right. limits of the street? Yeah, like or isn't time? it like 20, 22nd until? 54th, so. To 54th, okay, like yep. like two years ago. Yep, huge portion. Oh, wow, 54th, holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to be hanging out around 27th if you want to come by and talk to me. I'll be doing things with snow bristles. Wow, cool. Cool. Definitely see that. Go for that. 11 to 5, more or less? Yep. 11 to 5. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one to watch. I don't know. I think we ought to have an announcement about um, 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 best, best route to schools or whatever the hell it is. Julie's Safe routes to schools? Safe routes. 
but we don't have any. Else is around? Isn't like the walking school bus day or walk to school day? Is that recently? I think it's today. This? It's oh, today. Right. Isn't yeah. that this month? Okay. I knew it was. I knew it was early October. I was just thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. They were everywhere. Little kids walking all through the neighborhood, up around Minnehaha Park and Longfell's Garden. It was cool. Um, oh. I'd, like to, I'd like to start one in, for Bancroft. Yeah, a regular thing. Should so that I'm working. That'd be awesome. That'd be fun. Sweet. Love walk to school day. Oh yeah. Any other announcements? Move to adjourn. All right. Yes, it sounds like we're going to be adjourning. Like Julia, I miss seeing everybody in person, hopefully sometime soon. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah. otherwise that's it. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you Take later. Care. Thanks, everybody.